Hello there. I'm down at Hatchland Silver Lake again. It's a nice day, a little bit of cloud about, but not too bad. Patches of sun coming out, but the water is as clear as mud. So it's going to make it interesting trying to catch anything at all on the flies. We shall have to see. Other one, the line straightened out a little bit just then. That can be a sign. Sometimes it's just wind, but more often than not, it's a little fish. <laughs> Oh now look at that, how <laughs> beautiful is that? <laughs> now I would say that was a little wild brownie. After the roach and that wild brownie, things got a little bit quiet. It was clear that the colour of the water was making it difficult. So I did what I was normally quite reluctant to do, and I cheated. Blatantly. I added a couple of maggots to the hook. And then I thought, well, we'll have a little look and see what happens. One of the first things that happened was that the hook had a chance to settle on the bottom and from there it was intercepted by a little bream. I found this in the past. Bream tend to take the fly either as it's sinking with the maggots or if it's a particularly difficult day if I have added a maggot or two to the hook.
Landed that a little bit short of the weeds, which is sometimes where well, there's some good fish to be had. And I would have said that one had a fish straight away. Nice rod. That is a out of there, all right. Ah, look at that. Lovely rod. Half a pound, I should think. Nice fish. And away. Oh, bless. Oh, that will, uh, that will most likely be a carp. <laughs> Come on, ah, that's a boy. Doesn't feel a very big carp. Carp. Lovely. Excellent fun on these rods. <laughs> Lovely little fish. A sidle over to my landing net. Always best not to chase them with a the net. <laughs> there you go. Make it fly neatly in the corner of its mouth. Just a little baby. Probably a couple of pound. Nice little strap on a one weight rod there. Now, let's go back to being mortimerized again. So we'll pop him back and we will go with the ancient tradition of, and away.
After this, things settled down for a while, and it became clear that the fish were no longer feeding on the top, nor on the very bottom itself. They had to be hovering somewhere in between. So at this point, I decided to introduce a strike indicator, using a little setup that I'd been shown by my friend James Christopher Roo. He'd used a strike indicator and a hook to make a little float. I adapted this slightly using fine jewellery wire instead. The diagram should make the method clear. After experimenting with a few different depths, it turned out that the fish were hovering about two feet off the bottom. Pretty soon, I found myself into another fish, this time a small carp. And that was my final fish of the session. A couple of carp, a few roach, a little rud and a bream, but not too bad on a day when the water was so muddy that I didn't think they'd have a chance to see the fly at all. As it was, probably about half of the fish came up on the pure fly and I did cheat a little. I did add in some maggots for the other fish. I don't normally, but sometimes when the water's that murky, you need to give yourself a second chance. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to meeting up with you one day on the bank. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.